What's up, guys? This is Mike Loris with game number three between Pain Gaming and the 3D Clan. Game number one, unfortunately, was recorded with no audio, so I don't know if you're going to see that. But game number two, uh, well, I guess game number one first. Let's go over that one. Went to Pain Gaming, a very, very solid game from them. It was, quite frankly, a steamroll with some weird decisions coming out from 3D. Game number two went the other way around. 3D steamrolling Pain Gaming. And it looks like we're going to see the exact same thing as game number one, Pain Gaming. Going to first pick up that Shadow Demon. They seem to favor it very, very highly. And, well, it's been doing some pretty good work, saving allies many, many times. We're going to see if it's going to work for them a little bit better than it worked for them in the last game. Even though the last game was still fairly effective uh, most of the time, even though the Shadow Demon got all the spells off, it just simply wasn't enough. But, you know, sometimes that's the life of a support hero. Pain. Uh, we're going to pick up their next two heroes, and I feel like based off of uh, the past performance of uh, Team 3D Clan, Pain are going to be forced to ban out that Storm Spirit, because Storm Spirit played by Sharfik, that just demolished Pain's lineup. The mid lane was pretty even for the most part, but then once Storm Spirit started moving around, it was just so much pressure on Pain, they could not handle it. They're going to go for the Life Seal as well as the Wisp. Very interesting. Huh. Well, I mean, these heroes aren't interesting in and of themselves. If this was, like, Na'vi, then these picks would be fine. If this was Empire, then I'd say, okay, whatever. Uh, but Pain, as well as 3D, they've been avoiding the Wisp for the past two games. The Wisp has gotten through all the bans, all the picks, except for the first game, which he was banned out in the second phase. But, really, Pain haven't been going for that Wisp, and 3D have been okay with not going for that Wisp as well. So we're going to see some very different playstyle coming out from Pain. Ban first from Pain is going to be that Storm Spirit. But let's stop going over Pain. Let's go over 3D. They're going to go with what worked. They're going to go with what ha they had a, a little bit last game. It's going to be the Phantom Lancer as well as the Rubik. Assuming Solo and Sharfik. And uh, Solo and Nexus are going to be playing the uh, Rubik and PL respectively. Once again, they're going to be looking for a mid lane. And Pain, well, they're actually going to ban out first the Enigma. The Enigma was, was played decently by Serva last game. I don't know if it was the hugest problem, however. Pretty sure, however, Payne's last ban is going to be that Queen of Pain. Get rid of the, get rid of the mid lanes. Why not? 3D, on the other hand, Pain is pretty solid with their supports, so they're going to be looking to eliminate the, all the heroes, or as many heroes as they can, which is three heroes who could solo lanes by themselves. It's going to be uh, the Lone Druid last time. I believe it was them who banned out the Clinks. But just banning out these heroes that could hold down lanes individually. Uh, Pain also are in need of a solo mid. Last time it was the Five pickup of uh, Beastmaster, which was what Pain favored. It's still po a possibility. I don't think the Beastmaster worked very well last game, although, you know, sample size of one doesn't really mean anything, does it? So, possibly the Magnus ban out. Invoker, Queen of Pain, although, probably not Voker anymore. Yeah, in the first game, as in the second game, both have been kind of stompy. And I don't really know too much about these teams. I've seen them play a little bit. I've only seen actually two games from Pain, I think. Uh, but from just the huge drastic swings in those two games, I gotta say that these teams don't really seem too consistent. Which ain't, it's not exactly a bad thing, as long as you're more, is you're good more often than you're bad. But uh, when one team stomps the other, and then the other team responds in kind, then the third game gets a little bit awkward, because, I don't know, <laughs> someone's got to win, and probably both teams are going to give it their A game this time, Ten so probably, hopefully, we're going to see some equal play coming out from Five this game. Magnus is going to be the solo mid ban from 3D. They're also restricting some of their own yeah. bands as well, and it's going to be the Brewmaster, actually. And Nature's Prophet, so Pain Gaming have access to that Queen of Pain. Let's see if they're actually going to do that. They picked it up the first game, worked pretty well for them. But the problem with this situation for both teams is that, well, they both need a mid lane hero, and when you're banning out those mid lane heroes, you have to think of what you want, what the enemy wants, what you'll be okay with the enemy having. Pain Gaming do get that first pick Queen after that, so it's going to be the Queen of Pain once again. An instant Bane Elemental pick from 3D. Getting a little bit more support, so it looks like they're prepping a tri-lane, possibly. Unless they want to run a Bane in a solo midway. Which could work, although the burst damage from Queen of Pain 
isn't really going to, uh, Bane isn't really going to be protected all that much from that. Usually with Bane Elemental, he shines against melee heroes who rely, uh, mostly on the right clicks first to get their bottle, which is going to be crippled by that enfeeble. And then you could, uh, more easily Ten dodge the spells remaining. because they come out a little bit less frequently. But still, Bane Elemental are a really solid remaining. pick, especially against that life stealer. Even if he pops that rage, you just fiend script him and then you're okay. And Pain Gaming, I mean, the only stun they have is that Wisp. That I guess you know, if you're kind of counting disables for Fiend's Grip, it's also going to be the, the disruption from Shattered even. Both teams kind of going stun light. The Gyrocopter still is actually in the game, and Pain going to go for the Tiny. So it's not going to be a Wisp Lifestealer combination. It's going to be the classic Wisp Tiny. So now Pain's lanes, what are they going to be? I still got to say it's... Oh, it might be a dual lane, actually. Who knows? Pain... With this last pick, have gotten themselves a lot of lane versatility. And 3D, after that tiny pick, what are they going to do to respond to that? Because Phantom Lancer isn't exactly a great hero to have when you're Ten going up against a tiny. Remaining. Avalanche Toss will kill him in the early game. And then Five Tiny, who remaining. should be going for an Aghanim's build, or is probably going to go for an Aghanim's build, is going to demolish the Phantom Lancer later on. So they're going to need some other source of damage actually deal with that tiny. Phantom Lancer could do it if he gets stacked enough, but it's going to need a lot of farm for that to happen. So Pain's Gaming, a very, very solid high damage lineup. Even their supports oriented purely at giving their carries more in that late game. Or I guess not purely, but uh, Shadow Demon as well as Wisp scale extraordinarily well into late game for supports. So Pain Gaming, if this game lasts very, very long, they should be in fine condition. 3D on the other hand, they have a lot more flat values. Darkseer's wall is going to be very useful against that tiny as well as the life stealer. But so far they're pretty single target oriented. It's gonna be a clockwork actually. Probably gonna run that in a support role. I don't see that why they would override the Darkseer's long lane for a clockwork long lane, but uh, get a little bit more initiation from there, a little bit more stunning action as well. They really needed that stun for the uh, Queen of Pain, to prevent the Queen of Pain blinking. And no, we're actually going to see something different from 3D. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Let's go over who's playing what. Once again, we have Solo on the rubric with the nice clothing. Nexus on that Phantom Lancer, Prepare kind of to be expected. Battle. Dread is going to be playing that Bane Elemental. Serva is on that Dark Seer, and it's actually going to be Sharfik on the Clockwork. So he's going to gear up for a solo mid-clock. Haven't seen this in a long time. On the pain side, once again, they're smoked up. It's going to be King RD on that Queen of Pain, Fuga on the Tiny, Pada on the Life Stealer Billy, following up with the Wisp and Green Text for the third time in a row on that Shadow Demon. And all pain heroes smoked up, looking for aggression at level 1. They do have a lot of setup, a lot of damage. Oh, and they're going to run straight into Sharfik. Sharfik, you need to get the cogs right now, the Open Wounds. No, it's Feast, actually! What are you doing? The Open wounds, that would have given them a shot, but you know, the very quick reaction from Sharfik, leveling up the cogs, instantly setting them down. I don't know why Lifestealer would hold his point for that long and then get the skill that doesn't slow. But I guess this set has been all about questionable skill choices, right? Except for game number two, which was relatively consistent. Apata, what is he geared up for? He has Stout Shield as well as a Quelling Blade. So it looks like it might be a jungle life stealer. Green text. Uh, it's probably gonna head towards the bot lane as well, so wouldn't be surprised to see Pain completely ignoring that top lane. The Although Pada not really cutting down many trees. I don't know exactly know what Pain are doing right now, except for prepping for this mid lane pull. But life stealer, yeah, with the stout shield quelling blade is gonna be jungling, possibly with the help of Billy. Fuga won't need any help on the spot lane, at least for now, because the Darks here is going to be jungling for the first couple of levels. But Sharfix solo mid against King RD's Queen of Pain. Well, it's going to be very, very rough for the clockwork. If he gets some mana burnt and he can do some damage like this, if Queen of Pain actually leveled up Shadow Strike level 1. He's taking a lot of damage from Sharfix, not bothering to trade hits. Sharfix, unfortunately, not getting the edge on that, but King RD taking a lot of damage from these creeps. He does have two salves, so he's going to be forced to pop one of them, but the clockwork... Didn't go with any salves. He's going to slowly regenerate from those tangos. But he was aiming on getting a fast bottle. And such a damage trade early on when you don't have money restored is pretty dangerous. Oh, but a quick rocket flare. You're going to cancel off the salve. So, so far, Sharfik 
playing this middle lane pretty well. He's going to find his bottle eventually, but he's still in a little bit of danger. King RD still level 1. Jarfix is going to set up some cogs and oh no. Misplays by King RD. The rocket flares continue to fly and now Queen of Pain already down with to uh, already lost both of her salves and the pull unsuccessful from this life stealer. So far this mid lane is being won by Sharfik. 2 to 1 versus 5 for 2. But he's just playing it better so far. He needs one more rocket flare, one more creep kill. That's going to be his bottle. But King RD so thing with the Queen of Pain, level 1, you're not the strongest. But in just a little bit, he's going to be able to put the pressure back onto Sharfik. And being a melee hero, he's not going to have that much of an edge versus the Queen of Pain, even if he does have a faster bottle. But anyway, on the other lane, it's just going to be, you know, tiny farming, Billy absorbing experience, green text, pulling, stacking, all that good stuff, and Pata trying to get this pull. He is going to get one range creep, but that's about it. And on the 3D side, we see pretty much the exact same thing. Solo just stacking, pulling. Serva, only level 1 actually, Just trying to clear off some of these easy camps. So uh, any and all action is going to happen on this mid lane. Sharfik versus King RD. Both of them should have their bottle incoming. No, Queen of Pain still without a bottle. But it might not matter because he does have support coming in from both the Life Stealer as well as Shadow Demon. There's the invisibility support, there's the curse as well. Sharfik going to pop the cogs, but he's stuck. He is stuck in the illusion. Sharfik going to have to kill another cog. He can go straight for King RD. Needs another Rocket Flare. Is it going to happen? The Rocket Flare is going to fly, but it's not enough. 4 HP on the Queen of Pain. The Queen of Pain does barely survive as well as draws first blood. Wow, that was, that was a little close, don't you think, Pain? Clockwork is going to come right back, but right now the bottle is picked up from the Queen of Pain. Level 4 versus the level 3. This is when the Queen of Pain really shines. Lay down the aggression, drink the bottle, get the rune control, or, you know, simply bottle crow. And keep this land locked down. Oh, did that hurt? Top lane, Nexus getting free farm. Has some pretty good gold per minute, actually leading over the tiny. And a Ring of Basilius, is it picked up? No, no Ring of Basilius. One point in juxtapose, so adding a little more damage to this tower, but sizable creep wave. They're going to thin this creep wave as quickly as they can. Try to get this tower down. They do have a catapult incoming, so that will be a uh, pretty good benefit for them as they try to push down this top lane. Rotation coming around. It is going to be the Shadow Demon. He can't actually do anything about this. So this tower looks like it is going to drop with Siege Creep as well as another incoming wave. Mid lane in the meantime, King RD taking heavy damage from Sharfik. Those rocket flares constantly harassing back that Queen of Pain. Nexus doing something very smart, sending out the Phantom Lancer Illusion, drawing out the Creep Wave, just holding it out for just a little bit more so that the right clicks can follow through, and the tower is going to be destroyed by the Phantom Lancer. 1200 gold on him, let's see if he wants to go straight for the Diffusal Blade as he did last game, or if he wants to hold out for just a little bit more, try to go for a Relic. In the meantime, Serva, does he have his Soul Ring? He definitely has enough gold for it. He's holding on to it for just a little bit more. Gonna farm some of the hard camps, make sure to keep up that clarity. He's gonna be fine to do so. so Serve is getting a lot of farm, whereas the Wisp is level four with those pulls, so he's not doing too bad himself. And the Shadow Demon participating in the first blood. He's now gonna be on this top lane, trying to get a little bit of experience for himself, but he's still Down getting his experience a little bit restricted. Attack. Level two, level three from the Bane Elm, Mental and Rubik, though, so it's not like he's so far behind. Still, the name of the game is going to be this mid lane, where King RD is still holding strong. Sharfik, 13 for 1 versus the 23 for 10. So many denies on this Queen of Pain, which is why they almost have a, uh, which is why the Queen of Pain almost has a complete level advantage. Sharfik should be getting some support, or he pretty much needs to. But really, there's not enough stuns unless it's going to be the Rubik, and even then, I don't know. One second stun. Sharfik can lay down those cogs once again. Reliant on the Bottle Crow, as is King RD actually. The rune control. Mostly going towards the supports. The Rocket Flares, though, keeping Queen of Pain very low. Constantly chugging that bottle. But we do have support in this mid lane. It is Green Text. Looking for a disruption onto Sharfik, and the Creep Wave is going to push closer to the tower, which means Sharfik in a little bit more trouble. He still does have the cogs, however. There's the attempted initiation, this time with no invisibility runes, so it's going to be a lot more difficult. King RD chug the entire bottle, and he's still not even at full health, and Sharfik does have a lot of mana left. He's bottle crowing as well. Level 6 has been hit on the Queen of Pain, though, so she has a lot of burst damage. 
She's also taking a lot of burst damage from this clockwork. Not the most damage on these rocket flares, but they're coming out and they're hitting Queen of Pain constantly. Now we might see a little bit of rotation. No, it's actually just going to be Solo as well as Dread holding this level, uh, this six minute rune for the clockwork, who does have a hook shot. So if he finds his opening, he can get a kill on his Queen of Pain. Now he actually can't because Solo and Dread are going back to the jungle. So a rather passive game through the laning phase. And yes, it is going to be the Phantom Lance going straight for the defusal once again. That means the disruption is going to be very, very powerful very, very quickly. Because every time Phantom Lancer gets disrupted, he will lose mana from those, you know, one or two hits that the illusions do. Green text. He's finding some levels down here. Level 4. Although he can't really prevent Phantom Lancer from farming. Phantom Lancer already near his defusal. Six minutes into the game. Insane farm from him. Sharfic completely out of mana. But he is so very close to a kill on his Queen of Pain. One hook shot is going to be all he needs. He already used it, actually, so my bad for missing that. We do have Pata. Level 5, not jungling too poorly on this Life Slayer. We're going to go for Sharfic. There's the open wounds. Cogs instantly opened up, and it's going to push Life Slayer back, even with that Rage active. Sharfic with those quick fingers on those Cogs, and really, Pain, you can't keep trying to kill the Clockwork like that. Going straight forward in like that, using only a slow to open up, that's not going to work. It, it will never work, really. Just because one point of Cogs is just enough to keep him perfectly safe. In the meantime, bot lane... We do have a Wisp level 6, so we gotta watch out for this relocate. Fuga has been farming the entire time. He's gone for Power Treads, has another 1,000 gold in the bank. 50 CS on him, right behind the Phantom Lancer. So the Wisp, as well as the Tiny, that's how you get a kill on Sharf. Relocate right on top of him, but the Cogs going to separate the two. Avalanche is going to miss, and now Fuga's trapped in a cage. This is not Tusk. He's gonna toss Sharfic back towards Green Text, but King RD is already dead. Green Text taking a lot of damage as well. A failed relocate gang from Pain, costing them the Queen of Pain. 3D, a little bit of rotation support, is going to keep Sharfik alive, and he's even going to find a double damage rune on his bot lane. He does have his hook shot as well. Is he going to slide down to the bot lane? No, he will not because he's completely spotted out. We do have Serva finally moving down to the bot lane. With those ion shells, Fuga's life just got a lot more difficult. You can see how much damage he's taking already. He has 1200 gold, so he could be going for that Yasha build. Although with power treads already, I don't know. Could be, could be. Power treads aren't necessarily bad on the tiny. The Phantom Lancer going to be holding all of his items in the stash, so his defusal blade is going to come in one big chunk. Should be ready in ten uh, by the ten minute mark. Servage just going to do a little bit of creep jacking, holding out the double pull. He's been finding a lot of farm as well. Level seven on the darks here, almost level eight, but still the name of the game is this mid lane, where Sharpik has been holding his own remarkably well versus King RD. Playing very aggressive with that double damage rune. Does not have his hook shot though. King RD gonna throw off his ultimate blink forward screen of pain. And the cogs are up. Sharfik is trapped, however, and the creeps taking the battery assault is gonna give King RD a free kill. Clockwork actually taking over because of the poison damage. And Nexus does finish off his defusal blade. Nine minutes in, Tranquil Boots defusal blade. Free farm on this PL. It's gonna be real scary. Tiny at the same time gonna go straight for his Aghanim Scepter, so he wants that cleave as fast as possible. The Wisp does have his relocate again. So look towards more aggression towards him, uh, to the mid lane. Really, it's kind of risky going for the Phantom Lancer. Well, they do have dust now, so Billy can pop off that dust, and the Phantom Lancer is now vulnerable. Although, if the Phantom Lancer is really quick, he could purge himself right after the dust, and he will be able to survive through that. The Phantom Lancer is going to need someone to deal with him. Pata, moving up to this top lane, phase boots only on him, jungling life sealer. It works, like he could do it, but it's still not the quickest. We have rotation up here from the Queen of Pain as well. She's looking for initiation? No, she's not actually. She's going to move back to the mid lane. It's being pushed in just a little bit by Serva. So far, it's only 2 to 1. But still, the farm, as I was saying before, going the way of 3D experience, you know, pretty much at the zero mark. Just the way that Pain have been playing, making a couple more mistakes than the uh, 3D side, especially with that relocate in. That was, that should have resulted in a lot, but that actually didn't result in anything. Now Fuga, very low on HP. Sharfik gonna hook shot in, gonna find himself a tiny, instantly disrupted though. Avalanche missing again, curse on the Sharfik. 
Sharfik is going to Rocket Flare and miss, however. The relocate evacuation is successful. Tiny should come back at full HP. Sharfik taking a lot of damage. going to pop up the cogs. going to find Green Text in here with him. Doesn't have any spells. He's going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that Shadow Demon, but the Scream of Pain from outside the cogs is going to kill him off. And Fuga comes back at almost full HP with the help of Wisp, keeping him alive. In the meantime, however, the top lane is going to drop Nexus with two points in that juxtaposed one point in that Phantom Edge as well. That is a level 2 Diffusal Blade. So he's looking to get a lot of mana burned. In the meantime, the bot lane is taking a lot of damage. Fuga going to take a Nightmare. Dread, does he have Fiend's Grip? No, he does not. On cooldown, Billy's going to take that Nightmare away. Serva is right on top of Billy, though. The Tether is going to keep him alive. There's no Fiend's Grip. The Brain Sap won't be enough to kill this Wisp, not yet at least. The hook shot? Do they have a hook shot? Non 70 seconds, but here comes Pata, gonna turn it around onto Dread. Avalanche finally landing onto Dread. He's gonna brain sap to keep himself alive. Serva, unfortunately, using those cogs in a poor position. King RD going to find a kill onto Dread. Doesn't have any more mana, however. Dread might get out of this as Solo does come out to support. He's gonna throw King RD straight into Sh Sharfik once again. The battery salt friending blink just a little bit. Valera's gonna fly. That's gonna be it. No one dying on either side. Sharfik does have his hook shot up right now, so he's gonna look for more initiation right now. Who's, who's it gonna be? They don't know if anyone's here. Sharfik, you can flare into the trees. Oh, there it is. There's the Shadow Demon. Instantly disrupted, and he's going to have those illusions to block his sight, but it doesn't matter. Telekinesis into a Phantom Lance. Nexus picked up another kill. Three for three is the score. Shadow Demon taking his first death. But at the same time, 3D have been pushing down all these towers, which is part of the reason why the Gold Vanch is the way it is. The Phantom Lance are looking to be very active along the map. That right now level two diffusal blade. Twelve minutes in, gonna go for probably a drum vit booster heart, which is what he was going for last game. If it's not broken, don't fix it. 85 CS, 516 gold per minute with two kills on him. And the tiny, his combo hasn't really been coming together. Relocate only once. The tiny really needs to get some more action going along the map, but Pange don't have the opportunities. Like, Fu got the Avalanche Toss last fight, but it simply did not do enough damage because he didn't get the Avalanche Toss combo. He only, you know, just casted both spells individually. But here comes Initiation. Pada move right in, plus relocate in. But Fuga instantly pushed back from the cog. Solo is going to take the Avalanche, but he's going to be fine. The Sonic Wave does fly out as I'm getting frame rate lag. Clockwork does go off the Wisp. Tiny picking off the ra uh, Razor. Picking off the Solo. Now Rocket Flare is going to fly out, Green Tech slowed to a crawl once again from the Purge, tossing him back, however, Sharfik, very low HP, one more punch from the Tiny is going to make that kill happen, he does have another Purge, and Fuga is going to be the one who is going to receive it, Ion Shell, plus the Phantom Lance damage, it's going to mean that Pain is going to drop that fight, 4-1, to one in favor of 3D, Fiend's Grip all the while onto Life Stealer, unable to do anything, even if he did have Rage active, and well, even if he could attack, he doesn't really hit for very hard. Level 8 on this life sealer, no items on him. And Nexus going for a very, very quick illusion-based build, not going for much uh, doppelwalk. Wants to be as aggressive as possible. Teleportation onto this bottom lane. Only going to be the Shadow Demon. But the Juxtapose is going to save the Phantom Lancer's life. I really don't like how everyone on Pain has Razor at the end of their name, except for Green Text. Which I understand, it's like, yeah, Razor's pretty cool, sponsoring and everything, but it makes it really hard to read out their names and actually call them out during the fight. So, goddammit, Pain, why are you doing this to me? King RD might be in a little trouble. Hook shot? Not in time, not accurate enough with all those creeps there. But they carved down the bot lane, carved down the mid lane, and now they're gonna go, f uh, the top lane, now they're gonna go for a mid lane. Nexus is not going to be joining this fight, at least for now. Going to farm up his drums. Not getting any procs on that juxtapose. Unlucky from him. Wow, really unlucky. The mech is forced out. Nexus does get a lot of gold. 2400. And Charfik looking for that hook shot onto the Queen of Pain. Hook shot following up with the Fiend's Grip does mean a dead Queen of Pain. There's the Fiend's Grip without hook shot. He's going to activate the battery assault, get close, but there is the disruption from the Shadow Demon. King RD is going to take a melee range hook shot. Is the damage going to be enough? It is going to be there with the Sonic uh, Scream Pain from long range. Nexus taking a lot of damage, but he's going to still go for the Shadow Demon. He will have enough after that proc hit proc out of that Doppelwalk. Now Pata on the run from serve as well as Nexus. Does he have one more Lance? He does. Magic Community will keep Life Sealer safe, but only for a little bit longer. Surge as well as the Iron Shell. Gonna find Nexus to double kill. In the meantime, Razor, uh, Fuga, I'm sorry, going to get, try to get a kill on Solo. Gonna toss the Clockwork into his friend. Who's gonna get that kill? But in the end, it's a team wipe with a triple kill going the way of 3D. And Pain dropping yet another fight. This Tiny has not hit an Avalanche combo 
Avalanche toss Cabo a single time because every time he's been relocated in, the cogs go up at the perfect timing to push that tiny. Even though he does fire off one, he can't get another. That is a lot of damage that's being denied from pain. Also, it doesn't exactly hurt that the, the uh, pain have been isolating and killing off the Queen of Pain for every fight. Ada looking for a fight. Solo going to turn around for a hit. Actually blinks out. Servo, though, standing his ground for some reason. He can't run. He's trapped, I believe. He's going to get Sonic Wave down, dropping the wall before he dies. Pain find a pickoff kill. The rest of his team does fall back. 3,800 gold onto Nexus. He could buy his Reaver right now if he wants to. I was going to go for drums and a Vit Booster probably. So Same exact build. No skipping items. The score is now... 7 to 12 is the gold. Wow, huge advantage for 3D. Experience not so much, but still a substantial lead for them. 603 on this PL. You do not want a Phantom Lancer to get this stack. He's going to get a Yasha as well, actually. So it's going to be a Mant style build for the Phantom Lancer. Wants to get as many illusions as quickly as he can. Now this Roshan is slowly going to get dropped. Regen Rune onto Clockwork so he could tank it. Although Nexus kind of looks like he wants to tank it. He's a man. He could tank it. Serva going to teleport to the top lane. Try to hold off the push from King RD. It's not looking that great for Pain. They don't really have any carry potential coming up into the late game. Yes, the Aghanim Scepter is almost up for Tiny. But Lysler really doesn't have anything. Lysler really is only just a walking uh, open wounds. Only phase boots on him. Only phase boots. 17 minutes in. Uh, I don't know, and now Fuga in a huge amount of trouble, instant fiend script, Solo gonna blink forward, the tether, not gonna save that tiny, and the Wisp trying to relocate him out, but now Wisp, I don't like your chances, relocating into the trees, reconnect with nature before he dies, cause goodbye Billy, Billy no, Nexus getting in yet another kill, that was without the help of the Darkseer at all, two down from pain in this tiny so far, and not making... Not really paying off for pain. And this life salute, actually. I feel like they could have lain this a little bit better. If they had an aggressive trilane on top, perhaps, and put the life sealer solo bot, probably would have been better. Because there was no one really bot. They could have made the tiny made use of Tiny's early game. I don't know. Hindsight is pretty good, I suppose. Sharfik as well as Solo. Looking for a kill onto this Queen of Pain, but she's still pushing. Meantime, Nexus as well as Nexus and Nexus and Nexus is demolishing that tower. Darkseer of all people takes that right click. Now, with that Aegis up still on Nexus, they want to make an attempt on the high ground. Although Fiend's Grip not yet up, they do still have that hook shot. So Clockwork, let's see some Legend of Zelda stuff right here. Aghanim Scepter picked up from Tiny finally, so it's a little more damage there. With the disruption onto Nexus, these illusions are doing a ton of damage. Nexus has got to fall back. Dust's going to fly off. Phantom Lancer, he does see it. He's going to take an urn charge, and that's going to be it, at least for now. He's going to move right back in. Once again, the Aegis is up on the Phantom Lancer, and the Queen of Pain is still on the top lane. 3D, they at least want to force this Queen of Pain back. Although, if they keep doing this, eventually this tower is going to drop. Nexus throwing an illusion out. He's going to get tossed right back in. There's the disruption onto the Phantom Lancer once again. So far, Green Tex is the most important hero for Pain in this defense. Because those Phantom Lancers are stronger than anything that Pain has to offer. See this tiny, even with the Aghanim Scepter, minus 120 from that Enfeeble, maxed out from the Bane Elemental. The serve on the front lines does have a mech to pop, is going to do it, and this tower is slowly starting to drop, toss in, and everyone from 3D, very, very weak, but no initiation. Nexus still on the front lines, going to get disrupted once again, but he's going to run out of there. The mech is down. Everything is down, really, so 3D, they have to fall back. But hey, a s slow push, drop the tower down 1,000 HP, and they could do that again. They didn't really use any big spells for that, so they're just going to take a little bit of a reprieve, get this Phantom Lancer, his Manta, perhaps, and then move right in again. And Pain, what could they really do? They need more farm in this tiny. Oh, here we go, a three-man gank onto the spot lane. Avalanche is going to hit, kill off the Darks here. Pada even helping out as well. He's going to go for drums. When you're behind like this, you got to go for those cheap items because the cheap items are the cost-effective ones. The tower in the bot lane is going to drop to the big stick of Tiny. One more hit. There you go. Bane Elemental coming in, but as does Nexus, he's going to get so much damage to Fuga. Instant Fiend's Grip onto that Tiny, and Tiny doesn't stand a chance. Nexus is going to get a monster kill. That might be 
All that 3D needs to push in. Tiny should have buyback, does have buyback. But unfortunately for 3D, they're a little bit too far away from the base. The mid tier 1 tower, King RD. Spamming his Sonic Wave with that Aghanim Scepter is a very low cooldown, or relatively long, low cooldown. He's going to pick up this tier 1 mid tower. A little bit more gold in the pocket of pain. But still, they don't really have any translation into, uh, for that gold. No, Jarvik going to pop off the cogs. Might be able to trouble to take the curse as well. Turn around for the hook shot. Is he that ballsy? No. He's going to simply run out of there. Earn charge, bottle up, should be fine. But yeah, but what I mean by the gold translation is that they have a lot of gold, yes, but they don't have any items. And gold in itself is pretty useless. Use the gold to buy items. If you're not buying the items, if you're not buying the correct items, if you're not buying enough of the items, then what good is all this tower gold? It's not really helping at all. Fuga on the front lines once again. Lance flying out onto Billy. Huge damage just from one illusion. Look at this. Brought him down to 200 HP. 300 HP. Insanity. Absolute insanity. The Nexus still does have that Aegis. It's another one minute, so this push will continue. Man style being used, and the illusions are on the front lines. Avalanche this time not hitting the illusions. Nexus wants to split as much as he can. The avalanche toss is going to fly out. Telekinesis onto the tiny. Not going to have any follow up. 3D just slow pushing every single lane. I feel like they should abandon this and go to the mid lane. Because most of the work is already done there. But Pain holding strong. This time they do have the Queen of Pain here as well, so they will be able to throw out those Sonic Waves. And if the Sonic Wave was there last time, it would have been several kills for Pain. This time next on the front line is going to lose his life. No, it's going to be a hook shot in onto this Tower Demon. He's going to drop before he gets the disruption out. There's a Sonic Wave onto Sol who blinks the wrong way for some reason. Charfik trying to get out of there, but the Fiend's grip onto Fuka as Serva just sits there with that Iron Shell beating him down. And Pata now has to go run away. He's going to invest into the Queen of Pain and get out of there. Nexus still does have that Aegis the Immortal. He's going to open up on a King RD. Throw more lances. Slow that Queen of Pain down. The Wisp does drop to another Missile Flare by Clockwork. Two down from Pain. That's going to be more than enough time for everyone from 3D to take down this tower. It should be at least. Fuga back on the front lines with that Avalanche Toss combo. A lot of magical damage in an AoE. Nexus dropping a little bit low, but once again, he still has the Aegis. I don't know how he held onto the Aegis the entire time. Disruption onto the Darks here, not the right choice right there because he's just going to surge himself right on out. Sharpie taking a lot of damage, he's going to get a Life Stealer toss on top of him, but he should still live just barely. Avalanche is going to kill him off, but Nexus still not done yet, does have not have his Aegis anymore, was reclaimed by Roshan. They did get the Tier 3 tower, and one more toss, not going to kill off Serva. So long, drawn out push. Unfortunately for the PL, was not able to use his Aegis, was reclaimed by Roshan. But I'm pretty sure 3D are going to be okay with that. They got the tier 3. Now the Raxes are vulnerable. Or they could just go for another tier 3 in the mid lane. But I think that what 3D are going to do right now is just wait for another 4 minutes. Wait for the next Roshan. Then do the exact same thing all over again. Because if they lose Nexus, then that push is pretty much over. Unless Nexus is the only one to die in a 1v5 trade. So they really don't want to lose this Phantom Lancer in the push. Just because it's, it's uh, Spirit Lance is so much siege damage, if you will. Like, you just keep throwing them, and then it really helps out your siege. That push gave Fuga 1,700 gold. You can see he's he's hitting a lot individually, but and that overcharge will come through, so it's a lot more movement speed, uh, attack speed for Tiny. But usually 24 minutes in, you see a lot more on these Tinies. This game is really suffering, and you see Pata as well. Picked up drums, which is all well and good. Incoming. But with the amount of items that are coming up for 3D, it's it's not looking good for Pain. Clockwork going for his Aghanim Scepter. Bane with a freaking BKB. Nothing is going to interrupt him from that. Rubik going full on tank. Darkseer with a Shiva's Guard, which he used to pop off that last fight. So even more minus uh, DPS from this to this tiny. And Nexus just finding all the farm in the world. 805 on him. Farming heads as well as creeps. Pada, what are you doing there, man? He just hacked his way back there and he's hiding. I don't know why. He's a teleportation out. I guess he doesn't feel it's safe. 
top lane is being pushed. In the mid lane, we might see an engagement on Sharfik. Green Tax needs to get that disruption. Demonic Purge from far away. The Cogs go up. Curse is going to push Tiny back. Avalanche toss. No, he's actually going to hook shot out to a creep, and he completely avoids all the damage, even Sonic Wave. Now Dred's going to come in with the BKB Fiend's Grip onto that Queen of Pain. Friendly disruption, however. Hada going to get all of his damage stolen. Solo actually stole the Sonic Wave. Going to throw that one out. Dread is the first one to get a kill onto that Shadow Demon. It looks like everyone else from uh, from Pain has fallen back. Queen of Pain getting out of there really quickly with that blink. Chased by the Darks here. With the Shadow Demon dead. With no Sonic Wave up. Well, that's going to be a push opportunity. Oh, actually, Life Slayer's still in there. I was wondering how everyone evacuated so quickly. Life Slayer's still in this fight. Oh, it's going to be surprising for 3D. No, it's not, because they're going down to the bot lane where the Raxes are exposed. Creep Wave is going to be pushing towards them as well with that Clockwork Rocket Flare. Once again, the minus damage onto that Tiny. He's going to throw out another Avalanche, clear off the Illusions. And hook Shot in once again onto that Shadow Demon. Can he get himself disrupted? Yes, he can. Will that be enough? Levitate onto that Queen of Pain, getting dropped into the cogs. Green Tech's still alive, sharpening a lot of damage, but once again, the Tiny isn't able to get close enough to do any damage. Gonna throw out the Avalanche, gonna throw out the Toss, but Nexus is still very much so alive. He's gonna help to kill off the Tiny, as well as the Shadow Demon, and everyone else is going to escape, albeit barely. Once again, it's a 2 for 0 trade, and that's gonna mean Raxes. This Tiny pick just not working out. He's unable to get close because of those cogs as well as the huge swarm of Phantom Lancers. Bottom racks is dropped. Do that hookshot initiation onto that. Oh my god, Solo. Still holding on to that Aghanim Scepter upgraded Sonic Wave. Nuking down that Wisp. Now Solo, gonna steal Blink. Doesn't have any mana anyway, so it doesn't even matter. 10 to 22, bot lane has lost Raxes, and Nexus has another 4k gold in the bank. Pop off his Mantis style, make an Illusion Army as quickly as he can, but... The Tier 3 mid is going to drop as well. There's really nothing that Pain can do about this, at least until Tiny and Wisp are alive. But by the time that happens, it's all going to be over. Another Phantom Lance is going to fly to Queen of Pain, doing some heavy, heavy damage to her. Cogs are up, disruption onto the Phantom Lancer, so it's going to be Phantom Lancer versus Phantom Lancer, but it doesn't matter because the Rags are taking a lot of damage. Telekine Santa Puga can get dropped down, plus a vacuum wall. Huge damage going onto the Pain side, and now we see a Fiend's Grip onto Puga as Sar Sharfik is right on top of him. Sonic Blade is going to get thrown out. Not enough to kill the Rubik, however, living at 20 HP. That no Field, man, it does work. Now Sharfik going to get Nightmared and denied, possibly. No, it's stolen by Dread, and Sharfik's going to walk away from this. This is a 4 for 0 trade. Life Stealer still in the creep. He is going to infest out, get a kill onto the Rubik. Sharfik is around, but he's going to be completely set up from Vada. And Dread gets a double kill. GG has been called, ladies and gentlemen. Pain say they've had enough. Even after a very impressive showing in game number one, they're not going to be able to take this series. 11 to 27 is the final score, as Pain have had enough. So thanks for watching, guys. This has been Pain Gaming versus the 3D Clan from the Premier League season three, season four. I'm sorry. Game one, I still don't know what I'm going to do about game one. I guess I'm going to upload it anyway, and then just be like, hey, this game didn't record audio, but here's the game if you want it. Just for completion's sake, because no one wants to have a game missing. So I guess I'm going to do that. That's what's going to happen. But, yeah, 3D take it. So if you enjoyed this cast, guys, like, subscribe. If you didn't, then uh, tell me why. And it better be good. Better be good. GG.